Hey there. So today I'm going to be going through a leak code question as if it were an interview question, so you can see my thought process and how I would come up with an efficient solution and talk it through with my interviewers. So for this one we're going to be solving question one on leak code called twosum. So given an array of integers, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution. So they go on to give you an example where you're given the numbers 2, 7, 11, and 15 in an array with a target of 9. Because 2 plus 7 equals the target 9, we return the indices 0 and 1 as our answer. So at this point, I'd encourage you to pause this video and try to solve it on your own. If you get stuck, you can always come back and we'll go through how to solve it. But the best way to learn something is to start by trying to do it yourself. Okay, so let's start solving this problem. Step one, start by asking clarifying questions. Most programming interview questions are purposefully vague. When you start asking questions, it will give you ideas on how to solve the problem. For example, in this example, the first thing I noticed was that the array we're given is sorted. So I might ask, is the array of numbers always going to be sorted? This might be important. Is it possible the array is empty? Is it possible there are no solutions given the array and the target, etc.? Because this is a leak code question, we're not going to get answers to this. But in an actual interview, it's really important to ask these questions because a lot of times you won't really fully understand the question until you've clarified a number of things. Okay, step two, solve the problem without code. Whenever I've been stuck on a problem in an interview, it's because I've been thinking too deeply about how I would code it. Step back for a minute. Many of these problems are actually brain teasers that you'd easily be able to solve by hand if you forget about the code. And remember, getting any solution is better than no solution, so don't be worried about time complexity off the bat. So let's walk through this one and see how our gut instincts would tell us to solve this problem. So. Many times when you have an interview, you're going to be using a shared Google Doc. Um, so in this case, I'm just using Word, and you're going to have to be able to write out all of your thoughts so your interviewer can see what you're talking about. So let's go through this example. So we're given the array 2, 7, 11, 15, and a target of 9. So my gut instinct as I said before, is to just go through the number. So I would say 2 plus 7 equals 9. Okay, then we would return the indices 0 and 1. This is relatively easy. Let's try a different target. So we'll rewrite out that array. And we'll say that this time, let's say the target equals 22. So again, let's go through these numbers. So 2 plus 7 equals 9. And then I would move on to the next number. 2 plus 11 equals 13. 2 plus 15 equals 17. Okay, so we still have not found that target. Now we move on to the number 7. 7 plus 11 equals 18. 7 plus 15 equals 22. Okay, so now we have our answer. So now we could return the indices for 7 and 15. So just from looking at uh, just from looking at this, we have an idea for a solution. At this point in an interview, it's good to ask your interviewer if he'd like you to code this brute force solution or whether you should keep walking through ideas. Be sure to state that this solution idea isn't very optimal and you think you can come up with a better idea. That way, if your interviewer really wants to see you code, he has an opening to do so. If he's looking more at your problem-solving skills right now, it also allows him to see this. But let us assume he wants us to code it. We could implement this using two for loops. Okay, so let's start coding. So if the first thing we want to do is we want to write out our function definition. So we know that this is going to return a, an int array with the indices of our results. And we're going to be passed in an int array of numbers and a target value.
Okay, so a really good question to ask your interviewer is what happens if there's no results here? What happens if we can't find any numbers that equal the target? Now, the leak code problem said that this would not be the case. However, in an actual interview, usually you need to address these problems. So a good return value in this case might be negative one, negative one, because it indicates that this can't possibly be the right indices. So we're just going to put that in there. Okay, perfect. And to our main function, we're also going to add a call to our twosum function. So we're going to say our result equals two sum. And we're going to call this with that array we've been using the whole time for our examples, which is two, seven, 11, and 15. Okay, perfect. And we're going to set the target initially to nine. And then we just want to print out the results. Okay, great. So let's start coding this function. So we had this idea where we would look at each number and then we would compare it to all the rest of the numbers and see if they added up to the target. If it didn't, we'd move to the next number, which gave us this idea to do two for loops. So let's start with our first for loop. So for int i equals zero, so we're starting at the first indice, i is less than nums dot length minus one i plus plus. So you might be asking, why would we do nums dot length minus one? The answer is, we want to go from the zeroth index there up until this number, the second to last one, because if we went to the last one, there's no, there's no value after, so we wouldn't need that additional for loop. We've already checked if all the values plus this last value can equal the target. So we only want to go to the second last value. Okay, our next for loop. We're going to write for int j equals i plus one. J is less than nums dot length j plus plus. Okay, so for example, if i were two, now j will be seven. If i were 11, j would be the, the, um, okay. So now if, if i represents the two, then j will represent the seven. If i represents the 11, j will represent the 15. This makes sense. Okay, so let's add in our quick if check now. So if nums i plus nums j equals the target, then we know we found our answer. So then we want to return those values. So we're going to create a new int and we're going to return i j. Perfect. Okay, so this is our first attempt at a solution. So let's try running this, and we can see we get zero and one, which is correct. What if we went back to our example of 22? We can see that we get one and three, which is also correct. So this is working absolutely perfectly. However, is this efficient? Can we do better? What's the complexity of this? So the complexity of this is O n squared because we're going through two for loops. So this, the inner for loop has a complexity of O n and we're going through this inner for loop n times. So it becomes an O n squared complexity. So can we do better? Let's think about other possibilities. And again, it's good to ignore the code and go back to thinking about examples. Okay, so let's go back to one of these examples. So let's go with this one. I think this is a better example to work with. So we're looking for something better than an O n squared solution. So let's target an O n solution where each number is touched only once. The question is, can we do better than O n? 
And the answer is no, because we need to at least include the possibility of looking at every number at least once to find a solution. So let's think about what we're really doing when we look at a number. Let's take 7, for example. When I look at 7, I'm checking if a number plus 7 equals this target, 22. So, what number are we really looking for? Well, let's call that number we're looking for x. If we know that x plus 7 equals 22, if it's a valid solution, we also know that x equals 22 minus 7, and in this case, x equals 15. So really, when we look at 7, we just need to check if, we've, if the number 15 exists within the array. Since it does, we know that there's a solution. So, what's a good way to store numbers we've already seen? The answer is a hash map. A hash map has an average O1 access time, so it's perfect. It has a very low complexity. So now we're getting somewhere. Let's just review our idea in our heads before we start coding it. This is good to do in an interview to make sure you understand your solution. So let's go through it on an example. So on each number, we check if the hash map contains the target minus the number we're currently looking at. If it does, we have our solution. If it doesn't, we add the number to the hash map and move to the next number in the array. So let's say we're going through 2, 7, 11, 15 with a target of 22. And we'll just say this is our hash map. Okay, we start by looking at the number 2. So the target minus 2 is 20. Is 20 in our hash map? The answer is no. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to our hash map the number 2 and the index it's in, which is 0. Okay. Now we move to the next number in the array, the 7. Okay, so 22 minus 7 is 15. Does 15 exist in the hash map? No, it doesn't. So we're going to add 7 into our hash map. And its index is 1. Now we look at 11. 22 minus 11 is 11. Does 11 exist as a key within our hash map? No, it doesn't. So again, we're going to add this with its index to the hash map. So we get 11 and 2. OK, now we're going to look at 15. 22 minus 15 is 7. Does 7 exist in our hash map? Yes, it does. OK, so now we know that we need to return that index, which in this case is 1. And we also need to return the index of the number we're currently looking at, which is the index of 15, which is 0, 1, 2, 3. And there we go. We have our solution. So we now have an idea of what we're doing. We've worked through an example. It appears to be working. So now we can begin to code it. OK, so now we're ready to code our solution. I've started by copying in the same two parts we had before. So I have the function definition. I'm returning negative 1, negative 1 if we can't find an answer and I'm just printing out the results in our main function. Okay, so let's start by first creating a hash map. So our hash map is gonna contain a pair of integers because we want to include the number that we're looking at and its index. So we'll write hash map integer integer hm equals new hash map integer integer. Okay, perfect. And I'm just going to import that so we can make use of the hash map. Okay, great. So now we know we're going to have to go through every single number in the array. So how do we do that? We use a for loop. So we're going to go for int i equals zero i is less than nums.length, so we're going to go through every number, i++. plus plus. Okay, great. So now we need to add an if condition. So what are we looking for? We're looking if the hash map contains the key 
of our target number minus the number we're currently looking at. So if the hash if the hash map contains the key of target minus nums i, which is the number we're currently looking at, then we need to return those values. So we're going to return a new integer with the index i that we're currently looking at and the value we're going to get. So we're going to return new int. And as I said, we're going to return the value we're getting. So hn dot get target minus nums i. And we're also going to return the value i. OK, perfect. So now, if the hash map contains that value, we're going to return that index plus the index i. What happens if it's not in there? Then we know we need to add it to the hash map. So in this case, we're going to put into the hash map our, our number, so nums i, and its index. OK, perfect. So this all looks correct, and we're just going to run it to make sure. And you can see we're still getting 1, 3, which is what we expect for 22. OK, so now we go through step 5, which is test cases. So we walk through some edge cases. And this will be based on how your interviewer answered some of your clarifying questions. So here are some ideas. If he had said that the array is always sorted, for example, which didn't end up being important, but it might have been, if he had said it was always unsorted, for example, this might be an example you want to test. What happens if there's an unsorted array? Um, what happens if there's an empty array? What happens if you're given a target value that provides no solution? These are things you might want to go through and confirm that your code is doing correctly. You can do this by going through more examples. Um, if your code failed any of your test cases, then think how you can revise your solution to address it. Well, that's it. So I'll put up the two solutions on GitHub for anybody to download and review. And please leave comments if you see any errors, think you have a better solution, or if you solve this in a different language and think it might be helpful for the community. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see when I put out new videos so you can solve these problems right along with me. Good luck with your interview practice.